Hey everyone, uh, we got a little late in bringing you the second episode of our Sales Weekly. Uh, SaaS Sales, what are we calling it? Yeah, so it's a combination of inbound, outbound SaaS Sales. So, so let's call it SaaS Sales Weekly. And uh, because he was traveling, uh, then I was traveling, then he was traveling. So, so you know, but uh, finally we are both together in Dubai. This is my place and uh, you know, so let's do this video. So Daksh, what are we talking about today? So we're actually going to talk about the difference between uh, inbound and outbound sales. First is we, we're going to talk about what is inbound sales, what is outbound sales. And then we'll figure out what is the jungle process and what should be the best approach moving forward. Yeah. So, so guys, like I'll give you a little bit of background, right? Why we chose this, you know, topic because uh, I mean, it's as much as for our own sales team as for anybody else who, you know, any SaaS founders who are trying to build a sales team. And as you know, you know, once you get the product market fit uh, in SaaS, right, it's not easy. But once you get it, the next challenging task is to build a global sales team, right, or build or say or scale sales. And, uh, you know, inbound is fairly straightforward, but it becomes very, very difficult to scale very quickly. So how do you, you know, eventually scale outbound sales or start outbound sales? And this is a process where a lot of companies, especially in our size, right, where you are doing about, let's say, 15 to 20 million uh, US dollars of ARR, uh, you, you are really stuck in that limbo, like how to scale to the next 10x, right? And as they say, you know, the first million is difficult. After that, everything is easy. It's not true, right? Uh, every stage is difficult. And uh, I think every 10x is always equally difficult. I think getting here has been very challenging, but we have gotten here. So we are also trying to figure out how to get to the next 10x. So, you know, I hope uh, this video helps you as it is helping us, you know, kind of think through the process. So, yeah, Daksh. Uh, being, so, being good to great is the yeah, actually. So exactly, you know, another, uh, I would say, idiom here is good to great. It's not easy getting good to great. And that's where a lot of people, you know, get complacent. So, in fact, there is this uh, Mike Tyson quote I like, you know, it's uh, it's very difficult to run at 4 a.m. in silk pajamas. So, <laughs> you know, getting right. to good is difficult, but getting from good to great is even more difficult. Is even more difficult, right. So, yeah, that's inbound and outbound. So, tell us, uh, you know, let's start with an intro. Okay. Of, so, uh, some of the difference, uh, so what's the understanding of inbound and outbound? So, difference is who actually initiates the discussion. So, there are hmm. two stakeholders, hmm. customer and the product or the sal salesman or the sales process. Hmm. So, who initiates the discussion is the actual difference. Hmm. In inbound, we create the content and yeah. customer reaches out to us. In outbound, we reach out to the customer. So, we reach out to the customer. So, that's the difference. So, basically, you know, so that's the most important difference. If you reach out to the person, it's called outbound sales. If you, if the customer reaches out to you, it's called inbound sales. And as you can guess, right, the most important factor differentiating is in inbound sales, the intent is there, right? The, the customer is already looking for something. But in outbound sales, you know, the intent is not there. So, the sales cycle is generally longer. Right. But, you know, as you might think, you know, from this, it seems like inbound is the obvious choice. But you will actually very uh, quickly figure out when you start that inbound, you know, the customer already has a preconceived notion of what they want. Right. But in outbound, you have the opportunity to really completely design the customer journey. Right. And you can actually go to, let's say, a company like in our case, like, you know, you can go to a company like uh, McDonald's or KFC. And completely tell them how our solution would revolutionize their, you know, sales process or, you know, whatever process it is or whatever problem they are trying to solve. But in case of inbound, they'll always have like, okay, this is exactly what we want. So, there are pros and cons of both. You need to build a mix of both to really, you know, do it well. But that's what we want to discuss. It. It's actually standing in the queue. Uh, so, so, outbound is selling vaccines before COVID yeah. and uh, inbound is standing in the queue after the COVID to get yeah. vaccinated. So, so definitely inbound is much more easier to sell, right? I mean, it's quick sales. You have like the intent already, but again, you know, there is, but not everybody is always going to think about your product or your problem, right? So, 
so that's i think uh, some of the things that we need so to discuss typically inbound is actually not a sales yeah. so typically inbound is marketing sales is outbound yeah so so exactly yeah actually most companies at scale don't even consider inbound as sales they consider inbound as csm right they consider that you know the person already has the intent so the the customer success just onboards the customer and kind of grows them so so yeah that's you are right you know in that sense it's not called uh, even like called sales by a lot of companies but but you know for us for companies of our size for whom inbound is predominantly the largest uh, segment right so we call it sales and we we really depend on it and secondly you know inbound is how you prove out your market pro- product market fit mm-hmm. right with outbound it's very difficult to really think that you know do you have a product market fit or not with inbound it's very easy to like figure out if you have the product market fit or not but uh, with outbound that's very very difficult i think we'll we'll come to a conclusion yeah. at the end of the video that what are we going to decide what sure. is the next steps uh, in terms of the entire jungle process hmm. but uh, you know so let me give you another scenario so inbound is actually you you putting the fishing net right in the pond and then you know getting the fishes out of it whereas in outbound you have the right prospect there and you just have to target one out of that so it's like spear fishing in correct, some sense correct correct so rather than be setting a net so that's yeah. the process the ideal scenario uh, you know comparing from inbound and outbound is inbound you have to create content you get the traffic then you get the leads and then you kind of proceed to the prospecting stage whereas in outbound you have to reach so it's a one on one process outbound is one to many process mm. so you build the content so content is your asset in outbound let's say for us software is our asset then we reach to the addressable market so that's the actual difference and the process of inbound and outbound but yeah i think the next thing would be uh what Do- should we choose yeah so so exactly you know the most important i think the question to start with is like is inbound or outbound the right sales strategy for you right and uh, you know let me like kind of break it down and you know so how i would encourage you to think about is in terms of three things right uh one is your ticket size is your average ticket size uh, you know which is basically you know it ties into cac so so if your average ticket size is higher right let's say you know $10000 and above i think inbound could be pretty good for you because you could spend aggressively on marketing right and uh, uh you know but if your ticket size is lower right so you'll have to build like more of a zero touch funnel figuring out uh, you know email uh, journeys and stuff so so you know first thing would be really figuring out you know your ticket size right what is your uh, average ticket size of the product and coming back what is the sales cost you can afford what is the marketing cost per sale you can afford correct that is going to decide right whether inbound makes sense for you uh, your product or outbound number 1 number 2 right what is the uh, demand for your product so so you know when you say demand so there are two types of products right one is it's a impulse based product right so for example you are selling uh, hair oil right i have less hair i think daksh is going in the di- same direction process to you know somebody finds it, it's very clear i need it or not right uh-huh. uh it's sort of an impulsive thing you know if somebody comes to me i'll i'll you know be like fairly probably interested in it or something like that but in case of outbound you have to really uh, you know create that need in some case right it would be for example let's say multivitamins yes everybody would want it eventually you know i mean they are probably good but you know a lot of people also think they are a scam so so it's a little bit about having the immediate need versus you know creating that need Great. by educating the customer so outbound is more educating for a longer term about the need of the product and inbound is more about having that immediate need and people wanting to search for it so you have to understand is your product you know which which one of these categories is your product in 
and third segment would be you know geography right so is your product global in nature so for example in our case you know our product is very global in nature we sell to i think over 100 countries for sure right so for us it was very natural to think about inbound because you know for us it was very difficult to understand or pinpoint a geography correct right but for some people like you know they do like cross border you know trade settlement product right i know a few companies that's why i'm just giving this example you know for them it's very easy to target a market like singapore dubai and you know they know that okay there are only like you know x number of companies in this region hotspot who are doing this so inbound makes very little sense for them right it makes much more sense for them to do outbound because the geography is limited and they can do a wine dine they can do a, they can have a sales team there for us we don't even know what our customer is from right where our customer mm-hmm. is from like we have customers from ghana nigeria you know trinidad and tobago like pretty much everywhere so where would we target right uh, you know for outbound is going to be a challenge so geography is super important if you are very well spread out geography i think inbound makes more sense if you are super targeted in terms of geography outbound makes more sense right. so i hope these three things you know kind of teach you what what makes sense and what doesn't yeah correct in fact uh, if anyone who is thinking of doing outbound and you know still struggling with the question why outbound i mean why does companies who are actually in the right fitment chooses outbound because actually inbound is more about content creation it's a costly affair outbound is it's a it's a you know i would say a cost effective solution point so, to so you know so in fact on that note i would like to add see depends on you know like so outbound uh, so typically a lot of companies would start with inbound mm-hmm. then go to outbound and then have a mix of both or right. they'll start with outbound start inbound again and have a mix of mix both. of both eventually most companies will end up having inbound and outbound channels once you are at scale but you know uh inbounds gets very expensive very quickly because google and facebook know how much your cac ltv everything is and they are going to squeeze every single dollar out of you correct right and in outbound i mean you know thankfully they don't really have much control so far with the ai maybe that also changes but yeah i think that's the next move and in fact because outbound the process is all about cold call cold email prospecting yeah. using the channels like linkedin see so the beauty of outbound is you can actually reach the total addressable market in yeah. inbound you are limited yeah that's the beauty with outbound inbound you are limited by the intent right and in outbound you are you are like really going for your tam intent and content because yeah yeah of course you know i am assuming that you have content right i mean that's a given so okay so let's now get to what fails Okay. so you know so so i think from now on we'll focus a little bit more on the outbound piece in this talk because i think we can do another one about inbound also inbound like you know what's yeah. the inbound sales process for a saas company right and in this one let's uh, because we are right now in the process of figuring out our outbound sales process right so so you know from that being a little 13 more, years doing inbound yeah. and we cannot just talk about outbound today yeah. but the plan is to kind of pivot to outbound because yeah. fundamentally outbound is scalable outbound so, we, so you know <coughs> so the scale at which we are so you know we do we open about 100 new doors a month which is a very good number for a company our size right but at the same time we feel that you know if we have to do the next 10x outbound is the way to go and uh, that's why we are thinking more about outbound so in this video like you know we'll we'll just discuss a little more about so you know uh, outbound and in let's say in this case so the simplest thing is like how to start outbound for example right 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 so uh like we discussed uh, you know outbound is entirely a process of reaching out to the addressable market mm-hmm. and the best part the beauty of uh, a saas product like us is we have our market everywhere you you step out of the home every second or third shop can be our customer is our potential customer mm. or i actually see them my customers using somewhere similar products like us mm. or our product now <clears throat> the difficult thing is the the main challenge is 
how to get a customer for a 15 minute conversation yeah when he don't have an intent or when he don't know or uh, there's an awareness or a consideration mm-hmm. in the place the difficulty is to how to get that customer for a 15 minute conversation or for a 30 minutes demo or a meeting that's basically the basically get challenge. the interest so so you know i think uh, from that perspective there's this beautiful concept of ideal customer profile mm-hmm. right let me kind of tie it down to that so you know so when you want to start outbound right the ceo or the leader who's doing going to do outbound has to really define the ideal customer profile right now this customer profile is not like you know male age 30 34 not something like that but you know the way we define it is this is typically let's say a manager of operations in a company like mcdonalds or uh-huh. you know manager of delivery operations in any b2c facing brand that does hyper local delivery right okay. so 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 you know and how does it come from so it comes from actually the original inbound customers that we have so you know the idea is that you know from inbound you know so when you have let's say in our case we have about 5000 live customers right globally we figure that out that okay these are like the 10 icps mm-hmm. ideal customer profiles in those 10 Uh, in those three thousand or four thousand seg- uh, customer segments, and then that becomes our ICP. So you know, to answer your question, how do you get the person to talk, right? Like if you go to a KFC manager, the best way for him to get interested in what you are selling is so McDonald's, you know, was selling uh, or doing a delivery for, you know, say half a dollar. Now they are doing it for quarter dollar. right that's like one example it was more than half a dollar yeah but you know i'm not talking yeah. the real numbers because you know i mean, i don't want to get into any <laughs> trouble right so so the point is uh you know this is the best way to get initial interest from your icps ideal customer profile yeah so if i think that's the best way and in the beginning if you are a founder i would say i would really urge you to do it yourself right at least try to close first 10 maybe even 100 customers yourself and then try to put it to, to the team don't try to scale it before you get the process right, right. so once you have the icp right right then so what are the tools that you need to like uh, farm out or contact details of uh, some of the tools that uh, are to be used for outbound so primarily a lot of tools to kind of get the profile but I think the from the approach that you said, like if there's a founder who's looking at this video, watching this mm. video, the first is to get get the circles of friends and families mm. to get the first ten customers out there who can. So it helps you to create Basically the brand just, awareness. Basically, just you know, be a solo founder, go <laughs> to ten first customers and close them. Correct. Yeah. From <clears throat> from ten to hundred is the ideal, uh, you know, place where you start to processify things. correct so so you know so so just to kind of so what are so the second thing is the tools that you need so the tools that we use or are like really the good ones in this space are actually you know linkedin by far the best, best tool for tool. outbound right now right the you know the data is good you know it's a little bit spammy but if your messaging is right you know i think it works sales navigator uh, sales navigator is pretty effective i mean it's in linkedin only number 2 is uh, you know zoom info zoom info is very good it's a little bit expensive but if you you know figure it out i mean talk to them and stuff we'll try to get your discount from them in our video maybe i think we should get it for we them we got some yeah and there is also one there are a lot of these chrome uh, uh, chrome extensions that do it right? for us it is actually very easy you figure out a segment you even go to google maps hmm you get the customer right there mm. you select the location i mean you don't have to just focus on these fancy tools if you actually have a right product so, so software so is yeah. an asset in the beginning you don't but you know when you start building the process once you start building the team around it if you was let's say want to have like team of 20 people doing outbound you'll have to do it you can't i mean you know you'll be wasting too much time on on google maps correct correct so correct. so that's number 2 number 3 how do you reach out or craft your message so you know first icp second the tools to figure out your uh, contact uh, details and you know uh, customer details 
and number three is uh, messaging right and this is where content comes in so a lot of people think that you know inter- you need content only for inbound Mm-hmm. Actually, you know, you need a lot of content for outbound also. It has to be because you know, outbound is very, very content-driven also, right? You are not going to get clicks or you are not going to get any meeting sign-ups if you just say, "Hey, I am doing this, this, this." You know, would you like to have a call? Nobody wants to talk to you to listen what you are trying to sell to them, okay. right? So they want to understand. People are interested in their problems, so you have to first think about their problem. So you know, again, I'll give you a three-pointer thing. You know, I love three points. So first, uh, you know, three points which you have to cover in your message, right? Keep it crisp. You don't have to like you know go into these super fancy greetings and all that stuff. You know, the problem you are trying to solve for the customer, for the mm-hmm. ICP, right? Number two, how are you solving it, right? Okay. So you know, the problem is in our case. You know, we are reducing. you know uh, we are reducing the we are trying to solve the problem of increasing delivery costs delivery cost is a pain for every, every. hyper local company right now right. and you know how are we solving it we are solving it by increasing the efficiency of drivers and reducing the distance they have to or distance and time they reducing have to reducing the operational cost or reducing the or basically increasing the efficiency of drivers and uh, you know reducing distance optimizing i would say yeah and then third would be to okay what is some of the success we have had right so now you can have multiple variations you can have you know five points 10 points but this is what i think is the best so for example if you are selling to a kfc okay this is what we did for mcdonalds right you don't have to have the same size or no multiple size you can always say that okay we have slightly smaller customers than you but we are trying to you know um make it bigger and we can really give the efficiency be honest people will give you chance if you are a new company actually write it that you know we are a new company but because we are new we we are going to put in that much effort and we are going to give a better result to you so first point the problem that you are trying to solve right that's where the hook is and you know in the in the headline i think this probably goes really well right number 2 how you are solving that problem number 3 what you have done for a relevant or a similar icp right you are you know this this really is the trust building i think uh, line these three you know two liners and then be very short and crisp and then you know build that relationship give them time to think about it and be helpful right and and just finally kind of you know to wrap it up on this note lot of people think okay you know if you don't need if as a potential customer you don't need something sorry i'm not going to talk to you that doesn't work as a sales person you have to know that you are there to help your potential customers even if they are not buying anything from you immediately some day 4 years down the yeah. lane 2 years down the lane they and you know you. and i can tell you a very good example on that note right i i know that you know when i was raising i mean this is like kind of slightly different but similar theory right i remember i did not know any vcs right i needed to talk to vcs i needed to raise money etc etc so i said okay what do i do right and i met a vc like a person who was like a friend but a junior vc in in san francisco he told he told me that you know i think you are a tech guy you know why don't you just help vcs like us to due diligence and kind of you know understand the tech product because that's where a lot of vcs struggle i mean they are very good at it but you know you can always get a better uh, understanding from a deeply technical person i said sure so you know i actually started talking to like a lot of vcs wherever i would meet them i would tell them i would email them that hey guys you know i'm happy to help you guys uh, understanding any technology products or doing due diligence on tech right so i mean that would mean that you know okay, i can go into the code base and understand if it is good scalable i mean they are not bullshitting basically right and a lot of vcs you know took me up on that offer and i built connections right so basically give before you get i mean same thing goes with customers you know you want to help your customers without like in fact from just last week a customer a potential customer right he, he does not use our product but i met up uh, industry person and he mentioned you know i want to design a route man can you help us out i mean we don't uh, have a budget for a software 
but we just want like one time design of a uh, route i said sure man like i'll put somebody from my csm and get it done for you you know you don't need to buy our software for that it's no brainer so, because you know i know the day they see that okay this you know this route makes sense why don't we make it dynamic and you know buy the software it's only a matter of time right so i think that is the thesis you should have and you know like uh, that's how you should go so yeah tell me a little bit about the jungle process and then as always i have a small little bit uh, of an announcement what we are trying to do okay yeah. so i think uh, the jungle process is uh, is all bound mm -hmm. it's inbound and yeah. outbound so it's all that's bound that's a good one yeah so uh, we're doing inbound since a long time because uh, we have the right product we figured out it's the just natural for us yeah. correct so we figured out the the metrics of customer acquisition cost versus the ltv and inbound is pretty uh, we can afford it we we have the right content we 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 can channelize it through different approaches and different partners out there but then we're doing all all bound so we're generating leads from inbound where the sales person goes hi how can i help you versus now uh, you know the the customers prospects going cold customers not we're not able to connect to them yeah. is something we're moving to a funnel of outbound where we're targeting them again we're doing the retarget so that's the jungle process of uh, i mean that's the current process of uh, all bound but i am 100% sure that we are going to focus invest and decide the next steps on outbound because it's fundamentally scalable it's very quick it's addictive at the end of the day very rapid cost effective it's a little bit like hunting you know i mean once you start liking it you really like it and, and you can you can grow your sales skills you yeah. can you can be the actual sales guy and that's the tough part but you know the chase is always good so so just to kind of wrap it up you know we already are lucky to have decent amount of inbound customers we already get them you know get a lot of them but now we want to look at that that set of icps and go to the you know competitors or you know counterparts in different geographies and stuff and focus more on outbound and essentially you know grow our revenue to about 100 million arr right and that's the target i mean it's not an easy number uh but my personal target is you know once we go to 100 million arr we'll start thinking about uh, going public in public, us yeah. it's long long you know uh, it's a slow process and i know you know a lot of companies uh, do it very quickly at stuff because they don't really care about how much money they burn and stuff we are a profitable company from day one and i i want to keep things that way right so so we are like more like a marathon company rather than a you know we have to do it in 2 years or 3 years right we have to do uh, go things uh, take things uh, milestone by milestone so so that's uh, you know a little bit about it in and fact yeah. uh, one more thing uh, since we are all bound uh, the next steps would be uh, we're also going to channel with partnerships yeah so whomsoever is looking this video is actually thinking of uh, being our partner is actually uh, you know helping us out to get a reference business we are happy to do a lot of cost sharing analysis do some revenue share so partnership is going to be the another channel so, from where we get some referrals and some prospects between. so you know i'll give you a simple example here right a lot of our customers especially in countries like uh, you know african countries panama like you know like latam countries where there's a little bit of language trouble people want to have somebody local to kind of trust them what we've seen is a lot of our customers have come to us and say can i become your partner like i see a lot of potential customers in my country but they have language issues they have you know they have trust issues etc etc can i can i resell your products and that's what we are like you know now banking on and we already have a bunch of very successful partners who are doing very well in you know multiple countries and we are like focusing a lot on that and maybe we can do a do a video on like partnerships only partnerships right uh, soon and yeah so so now to the to the announcement right uh, so to speak uh, so what so you know as you know like we our company is called jungle works every product is essentially named after a bird or an animal or something something living right so we are now coming up uh, with our new product it's called sales mamba right mamba as you might know is a is a snake right uh, so what does it do right 
so there are what we realized is ai is very very hot and it's very very potent right now right so so we believe that you know ai is going to change how sales is done and how growth is done right and our customers a lot of times have a lot of issues in like who do they reach out how do they increase the frequency of sales in terms of let's say a grocery delivery right how do they send out a push notification to a customer when they feel the person should be buying the next batch of groceries from them and mm-hmm. set up something like that engaging engagement right customer engagement it's not very rocket sciencey thing but uh, we actually took uh, you know tensorflow pytorch and uh, llama 2 and a few other ai uh, tools and put together a set of uh, put together a product which essentially uh, you know tells you how to increase the frequency of purchase from your existing customers right and that's a product we are testing in beta right now we are doing it with some of our own closed uh, products and uh, soon we'll launch it to the world and uh, i hope you know it's going to be a big uh, big game changer for a lot of our customers because a lot of our customers are very you know very happy with the hyper local um, Business. you know businesses but you know in hyper local frequency of sale is very very important mm-hmm. you really have because you don't have the luxury of like you know being like an amazon you can sell to anywhere in the world but you have to focus on smaller geographies typically you know uh, they are limited in geographical distance and stuff so you have to increase your dif- your frequency of purchase rather than trying to only focus on the uh, the number of new acquisitions and stuff So, so yeah sales so, mam- mamba mamba is, sales mamba is the new thing coming up yeah i think then so we'll be launching sales mamba soon and uh, yeah so and i think uh, the ve- one last thing that i would uh, like to say is a lot of viewers are still confused that what should be their process inbound outbound one single line if your customers know you more today compared to yesterday if you have more brand awareness and brand settlement today compared to yesterday you're actually doing the right thing that's a growth for you yeah so basically i think in short think about the next step right keep taking the next better step keep improving one one step at a time and don't worry about too much about the end game right i mean you you'll find people you'll find partners to help you along the way so keep going and you know we'll keep sharing uh, more as we go along right. in our journey so thanks a lot guys uh, thank you for uh, spending the sunday morning with us <laughs> right and uh, yeah thanks a lot bye thank bye thank you have bye. a good day